Hello and thanks for tuning in. Today I've got something a little bit special for you. No, it's not that trailer over there, it's this over here. A 1935 Rolls Royce limousine. I bet you didn't expect that. She's a beautiful old girl, she's from 1935. We have a limousine body made by Windovers in Manchester. Now excuse the noise, I've left the engine running because I've had to jump start this this morning and I don't want to be doing it again. Now we have the beautiful Parthenon grill, handmade, along with the flying lady and the classic Rolls Royce badge. This down here is where you insert the starting handle. Absolutely beautiful. You don't see many of these every day. Classic wire wheels and a beautiful two-tone paint job. Doors are suicide doors. They open backwards. Oop, nope, that will stay open. The red leather interior, fully reupholstered. Yeah, there's no electric windows in here. Now you'll notice the lack of room in there. That's because if you could afford a car like this back in 1935, you could also afford to have a driver. And if you look at the rear, that's where the Queen would sit. Which is positively palatial. Lamb's wall mats included in the price. Yeah, the person in the back gets all the room. However, all is not as it seems. This lovely bit of wood at the front looks like a wardrobe. Hide the secret. So if we pull this down, there we go. Another seat. And there's one on the other side as well, with your picnic tables. So yes, you could carry one, two, three, four, five. You could probably squeeze eight in here. Although with only one or two in, it's quite slow. So I could imagine how slow it would be with eight in there. So put that back. Back into there. And close the suicide door. Moving around the rear. We have a very small luggage compartment. And the spare wheel mounted on the wing. I've opened the engine compartment. And here we have the 3.7 litre Rolls Royce Strake 6. Purring away lovely, considering this car is getting up to 100 years old. Now they made nearly 4,000, I believe, of these vehicles back in the early 1930s. And according to current records, over 70% of them are still on the road today. How many modern cars can say that? Not many at all. Anyway, what we're going to do now is take it for a short drive into Manchester and show you a couple of the sites. One that is actually related to this very vehicle. So I'll see you there. All right, so how do we start this uh, beast? You don't just put it in D and go. Oh, no, no, no. There's the key. It's like a ignition house key. Uh, we go, that goes in here. I've already unlocked the ignition, turn it on there. Now we have to increase the advance on here and the idle speed. The choke is this little bit here, push in and turn, that's the choke. I press the button. And we're running. Give it a moment. Can we take the choke off? And move the advance back to where it was. And the idle speed. And there. 
the gear lever is down here on the right hand side next to the handbrake. Four gears, synchro mesh only on third and fourth. So you have to match the engine speed to the road speed when you change it from first to second. Yeah, there's not a lot of room in here. And the view through the front, that beautiful long bonnet with the mascot on the end. Now we're off into Manchester. Now I apologise if I don't say a lot because there's a lot going on in here. It's not like driving a modern car. In here I'm driving. In a modern car you just sit there and things happen all around you. But not in here. You are driving. And we won't be going fast. Welcome to Deansgate everybody, the old Roman road that they run, used to run between York and Chester, that's why it's straight. I need to keep hold of the indicator. It's a little egg timer that expires in about three seconds. I'll show you. Stop here for a few moments. At the bus stop. And why have I stopped here? Well, let me turn the camera around. Because that building you can see there, the far one, with the flag sticking out. That is the Midland Hotel, and that's special because in 1904, just, let me just start the gear lever, <laughs> that's it, in 1904, two young men met in that hotel, and those young men were Charles Rolls and Henry Royce, they met for the very first time, and during that very meeting, they agreed to start Rolls-Royce. So that's why I've come this way. So if you're ever in Manchester, it's a lovely old building. You can get a lovely quintessential British afternoon tea. But I suggest you book because it does get quite busy. So anyway, let's continue and we'll go around the town hall. She is. Excuse the scaffold, dude. Yeah, you can't see a lot. There's a lot of building work going on with the, with the town hall. 
it's covered in plastic unfortunately We don't like traffic lights. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed a little view of Manchester. Fortunately, you can't see a lot today. from everywhere when you drive one of these you, 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 you can't be shy because everyone's looking at you Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this lovely look back at motoring from yesteryear. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you the next time. Bye bye for now. <laughs>